we're starting off with heavyweights. We've got Parker Porter against Alan Baudo. I don't. I, I feel a bit bad for Baudo's first two fights. <laughs> uh, what was it? Aspinall was his debut. Yeah, which is you know horrible, horrible. And who's now main event in London? Yeah, that just shows you where the different places in their in their career. Yeah, and then Nascimento pop for drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I was wondering why it was no contest. Yeah, then he. Yeah, but he he got he he did get like pieced up in that. He did, and he was winning the first round as yeah. well. You know, I, I I will say he looked really good in the first round. He just he just kind of looked like he punched himself out a bit, like he was dealing with the size and strength of Nassimento. You know, grappling with him up against the fence, head position. I mean, I I I can't remember. I don't know what the thing was he tested positive for. I did yeah, read there's it. There's loads but... of um, chemicals and stuff. I, yeah. don't, I don't really re know, but. Yeah. <laughs> See, whenever there's a no contest, especially, you know, if it's something like that, I don't mind going back and watching it and seeing what I can learn from it. I don't just write those fights off because there will be something. But then, like, if it's, I mean, like, if someone says positive for marijuana, I can I'm kind of like, okay, whatever. I'll watch the fight and I'll take it as it is. You know, if, like, there was a fighter recently that got to, uh, who was it? Jamal Hill. Oh, that was it. Jamal yeah. Hill. Yeah, yeah. Um. And it's just like, oh, whatever, you know, I, I kind of, I won't discount the fight off his record, but with this one, because it was, a, it was, I don't know the name of it. It was some kind of chemical compound. To me, that looks like a performance enhancing drug. And yeah. I don't know how it enhanced his performance against Baudo. Like, did it help his conditioning? Yeah. You know, did it help him get into that second round and get that TKO finish? Did it help put more power into those shots? Like, although I watch it and I think to myself, you know, Alan Baudot, he, you know, he, he did get worn down in the second round. He did get worn down by a guy that failed a drug test, and I don't know what those drugs did to his performance. So I, I, I that's my kind of thinking on it, yeah. just to, just as a, you know, yeah, no, a I, caveat. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think um, the thing is, Bordeaux's coming out of MMA factory as well, isn't he? Mm -hmm. So you know, he's training with good heavyweights, loads of good heavyweights, yeah. good heavyweight kickboxers, yeah, and. Uh, they they brought over a load of those uh, um, those um, fighters for Aries, and there's a lot of Dagestani wrestlers in there. There's a lot of really strong, yeah. powerful, big wrestlers, and some guys they brought in specifically for Cyril. Yeah, like he's going to be working against a lot of grapplers now. I think both of these guys would much rather have a tie boxing match than anything else. I think they'd both be quite happy to stand there and trade, but it wouldn't surprise me if we see Parker Porter level change. He's got a couple of nice trips. He's got a good single leg up against the fence he used against Parisian. Yeah. And, and he won't be worried about mixing this up. Whereas Baudo, I don't think he's got the option. No. You know, I think he might be able to, I think he might have some judo in his background, if I remember right. And he might be able to reverse a couple of positions, but he's not going to be able to continue the wrestle. Because with judo, as soon as you land, it's done. So there's no kind of, there's no continuation after the the, the, the fight hits the floor. Um. And they've both got a very similar game. You know, yeah. Parker Porter's kind of heavy on his feet. He's a bit ploddy, but he's very much jab, cross, low kick, jab, cross, low kick. And then Baudot's very much jab, cross, low kick, but he's kind of on his toes and he's a little bit more, a little bit more Cyril Gann in his movement. I mean, I'm, I'm picking uh, Parker Porter, but only because I, only because I think he, he, he's not, he doesn't kind of break mentally over, over 15 minutes. Yeah. And that's what I've seen against Baudot. And I'm, I can't, you know, I can't say anything about his opponent, obviously, because he did he did fail the drug test, but he didn't look like he wanted to be in there in that second round, no. you know, and he just takes some some heavy shots. Yeah, I um, I, I backed uh, Bardo. Did you? Only, be, I mean, I logically I did think Parker Porter. Just he, he just seems a bit sharper. He's a little bit more experienced in the, in the UFC as well. He's coming off two wins i think yeah. as well so he's and got two a, three rounders as yeah, well you know he's got a bit of momentum but i always like to think <laughs> when you're on two losses um they kind of get probably get a bit of fire in your belly and True. And it, it, as well when i noticed he was coming out of mma factory i was like if he's been working closely with mm. guys like cyril and some other like talented heavyweights then it might just be a matter of time before he starts to show that yeah and yep. uh, I'll, I'm backing him for him for this one. Fair enough. I mean, yeah. you've got to think, so he's technically he's not coming off two losses because one of them well, now in yeah. no contest, but it might still feel like a loss to him. Yeah. The Aspinall one, no doubt was a loss, but that was kind of short notice as well, if I remember right. Oh, what, for Bardo? I, th I think it was a oh, short okay. notice one for him. And then the only other loss on his record is against uh, Dolce Lunghi Ambulla. 
Uh, and yeah. if you've not seen that, watch it. Because they were they were like trading and, and Dolce, as you know, is kinda wild. He's real real reckless, but super fucking powerful. And unfortunately Baudot just stepped in at the wrong time when he threw this mad right hand and he just literally stiffed him. Like it, it almost looked like he grew three inches as he got knocked out. <laughs> he went so stiff. Um Jeez. Yeah, yeah, pretty unfortunate that. He's taken some hard fights and he's still only ten what well, eleven fights into his career. Um I, I think this could be an absolute banger. Yeah. You know, the other thing I will say is uh, Parker Porter's got wicked low kicks. Yeah. Like he chopped the shit out of uh, Parisian with those low kicks and Baudo likes footwork and he does stand a bit tall. I think Parker Porter might be able to, might be I, able to wear him down. Parker Porter, he's got a really slim face. It's weird, isn't it? For like, if you chopped his head off and put it on a bantamweight, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think it. Would... He wouldn't look. No, you, you're dead right. You're dead right. He, he could be a, he could be a welterweight contender from, from the neck <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> but then, and, and the other thing, and I really struggle with this. His, his name Parker Porter. I just want to say Porker, and I can't <laughs> not say it in my head. I keep, I keep trying not to say it, but it just doesn't fucking work very well. <laughs> Parker Parker Porter Porter <laughs> Porter he's oh yeah it's, it's yeah Parker Porter it's just when I when I it's odd isn't it yeah it's, when I was watching him earlier I was like because usually if you if you're a heavier guy you've got a bit of chub in your cheeks yeah he just he's, he's got like good cheekbones and it's just like <laughs> <laughs> mate that's where I get fat first my face goes basketball first and I don't know I don't get it there are a few people like this I don't I we, we have to assess these people's diets because I've seen a few people that are like, there's a few boxing coaches that are like that. They've got like a real skinny face, but then their body's just kind of, <laughs> yeah. just kind of heavy. <laughs> it's weird. Maybe the, like you push, you know, you said yesterday with the iron where you push down the swelling. Oh, that's what it is. Maybe they just, there you go, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Maybe if he sleeps upside down, somebody will fall back into his cheeks. Um, what, one thing to note that we haven't mentioned is the height and reach advantage for um, Alan Baudo. Four inches in height, uh, sorry, four inches in reach, three inches in height, um, seven wins by knockout, but then there are four submissions on Park Porter's record. He has Kimoras and Keylocks, that's his thing, Americanas. Yeah, he's got a very balanced yeah. um, record mm -hmm. like in terms of his wins and stuff. Yeah, yeah, very balanced, all divisible. <laughs> four 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 36 yeah. age 12 and 6 6 yeah. foot anyway top of the weight class Pog Porter yeah I'm I'm gonna back Bordeaux okay I, I appreciate little, you sticking to your guns yeah. I think Parker's gonna chop him down and stop him Pog Porker 